Okay, so we're gonna get on to uh, starting to put our front cover back on. And before we do that, I do just wanna say something. I did misspeak earlier, um, and I said this was only torqued to 23 foot-pounds. It's actually 25 for the uh, impeller nut if you're putting the stock wheel back on, if you were doing a rebuild, or even with this aftermarket um, upgraded wheel, it's gonna be 25 foot-pounds for the front and then 22 foot-pounds for the rear. So if you've already you know, done 23, go back real quick, torque the extra two foot-pounds real quick, make sure that it's all done correctly. So um, we're gonna start getting ready to go ahead and put the front cover on, and we're gonna use a clean shop tower or something like that, a little bit of brake clean. We're gonna go ahead and just wipe this surface off here. Everything is nice and clean. We'll do the same thing to the actual front cover. Um, and before we start to put any kind of gasket maker on anything like that, we're gonna go ahead and put in our new pins. And we're gonna confirm the fitment of the spacer plate. Now, I've gotten a couple of these before that it looked like everything fit correctly. Um, and I'm not saying that they came from Fizzle, I'm just saying in general um, that they have not lined up perfectly. So this gives us a chance to start checking that out. We're just gonna gently place those in like this, back into the holes that we took the factory ones out of. And these go in and out a lot easier than the factory ones do. So gonna take our plate on, check our fitment here, make sure everything lines up good. And what I'm talking about with a fitment is I've seen ones come through that this lip was considerably higher up. So there's a little bit of a gap here, um, but that's not going to affect anything. But I've seen them sit way up like that, or you know the groove of this, this little um, dimple that's right here, um, it would stick way beyond that. So I wanted to grind that down and keep it smooth with the, uh, the factory housing shape, but everything on this one looks to be really good. So we're just gonna proceed on with uh, applying our gasket maker to the spacer. We're not gonna apply it to the back cover and the front cover. We're going to apply it to the spacer. So we'll move the camera over, show you how to do that real quick. So here we are with our spacer, and we're just gonna take some gasket maker here. You can use ultra black. Um, me, I personally, on something like this, because you're probably gonna wanna get the supercharger back on and, and ride really soon, we're just gonna use the 90 minute gasket maker, the right stuff by Permatex. Um, you do need to work a little bit quicker with this, so um, we're gonna go ahead and just apply as small amount as possible to it. So we don't want to get too heavy with it. And the reason we don't want to get too heavy is if we put too much on it, once we compress everything back on it, we can have excess that'll you know, come off, it can pinch off, and over time of the, uh, the boost pressure building up in it, it can break off some of those pieces and get sucked up through the engine. So we really don't want to have to uh, deal with any of that. So again, we just want to use as light of an amount as possible. And we're just going to go around and we're gonna end up just smearing this with our finger. And you're also gonna to want to use a solvent to clean this plate off as well, just in case it has any oils or anything on it. So we'll just take our finger Smooth it out nice and evenly around the entire surface. It's not going to be a problem if you get it into the holes of the plate.
Let's see, I really don't have a whole lot on there. The goal is to use the, the minimal amount as possible to be able to get a good seal on, on it. see as I'm wiping that inside lip there, some excess is coming off, that's okay. Once we make sure we've got everything coated, we will simply flip it over and that's where we're going to have these clean little shop rags here. We're going to flip it over and then do our other side and we will begin to put the plate all back together. So I'm going to do this real quick and then we're going to put the plate back on, put new Loctite on the bolts and uh, go ahead and get those torqued down. All right, so we've got the spacers on, our gasket makers on. We're going to go ahead and take our front cover and place it over. Make sure we get everything lined up here. seats in correctly. Okay, so we've got a torque sequence that we have to do and I'm going to show that to you guys here. So this is the torque sequence and everything's supposed to be done to 96 pound inches right there. Uh, I'm just going to do 100, just round it off to 100. It makes it way easier. It's not going to be, it's hardly any extra torque on it. So we're going to start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Loctite, it's already been put on these. Just gonna put these in gently at first. Don't have to go in really the order of the torque sequence when you're just gonna be tightening these up first. Looks like we've got an issue with our plate here. We're gonna back some of these off. And this is why I like to do this stuff in real time because not everybody gets to see exactly how there can be challenges and stuff that come up with these. So it looks like like our hole for this one is being blocked by the plate. So now I'm going to have to take this back off and check out this uh, hole. And that's probably something I should have checked earlier. It was not just the alignment of everything, making sure it was good and making sure all the holes were drilled out properly for the bolt to go through. Because as you can see, I started to put the bolt into it and it starts to bind up and it's actually hitting the plate. So we've got to pull this back off real quick and check it out. Okay, so what I found was on the 
number nine bolt that the hole on this plate was not lining up correctly. Uh, so as the bolt started to go in, it was not making contact with the threads that it needed to. So I um, had to pull everything back off, clean the plate back off, clean the mating surfaces back off. So uh, I'm actually gonna have to step this drill up and get a little bit bigger of a hole and uh, just check it from there. So you can see in here where the threads were making contact with this and they were not actually trying to go into the supercharger. So I'm just gonna drill that out real quick. And when you do this, if you have to do it, you wanna step up, take off the least amount as possible. Supercharger up here. Need to file down any of, uh, we're not gonna have any on this side, but we're gonna have to file this down a little bit. That way it's not gonna be cutting into our mating surfaces of the supercharger housing. Plate back on and we'll check our Fitment now, it seems like we are in a better position now, so we'll just take a bolt, run through it, and make sure that we're able to thread that in easily. Okay, so there we go, problem resolved. And again, like I said earlier, this is kind of why I like to do these in, in one go rather than chop and editing. And as great of a company as Fizzle is or Reva or anybody, there can always be some minor thing that is out of tolerance. It's just gonna throw everything out. So, you know, probably something that we should have done earlier was go ahead and put this plate on and check those holes and make sure that everything lined up. I've not had a problem with this before. So, you know, as long as everything around here looked good, everything from a you know visual inspection initially looked like everything was good, but once we started to put it in, you know, we had a bolt that started to bind up and obviously we got a brand new supercharger here. We definitely don't want to try to chase that thing through and just strip our threads out. So um, I went ahead too and just chased those threads just in case it did, you know, bite on a couple of the first ones and, and mess them up. So uh, I'm going to pull the plate back off now, uh, clean the bolts up because they've got some sealant and stuff on them, put new Loctite on them. Put new lock tie, or I'm sorry, put new gasket maker on the plate and um, or the spacer, and then we'll put everything back together. Got everything on, we're just gonna go ahead and start tightening everything back up. So set our torque wrench to 100 inch pounds. We'll do our sequence that was provided. So number one is right here. Two. Four, five here, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we'll go back and repeat the process one more time. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so you're gonna see like the sealant and stuff kind of squeeze out. Um, if you're worried about cleaning it up, I wouldn't really do it now. I would wait until it dries and if you wanna peel the edges off, uh, but if not, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's simply cosmetic. But uh, that's everything there, and we are good. Hey guys, go. well that's it. And uh, as you can see, you know, not everything always goes to plan. Um, uh, adjusting the slip on it was a little bit different. Um, you know, it's a brand new supercharger. Um, it, it's just you know, everything's case by case. So just so you know, when you guys are taking these to a shop, and these guys, you know, have labor hours that you know, or uh, hourly rates that are pretty high and stuff. This is why, I mean, it takes a lot of different specialty tools to do these things that end up getting wear and tear on them that have to be replaced. So you're not just paying them for their time, you're paying them for the tools that they're using, all the shop materials, the gasket maker, the rags, and I mean, just everything that goes into it and their expertise, you know? So um, yeah, you might be able to take it somewhere and they can do it cheaper, but are they gonna do it right, you know? It's like me starting to uh, drill this bolt or uh, screw this bolt back in and start to realize it was binding up. Somebody could have just, hammered it on through and you would never know uh, the difference and you could have damaged threads on the inside of your brand new supercharger. So, um, and again too, you know, Fizzle, great company, never had any issues like that before where I needed to make one of the holes bigger, but through machining processes and stuff, when you're making these things that, you know, making thousands of them, you're gonna have some machining errors every once in a while and you just have to adapt to that. So hopefully I was able to show you that. Um, uh, but yeah, everything's good to go. Check the slip on it again. We're in that 15, a little over 15 mark where we wanna be. And this is a brand new supercharger. It's gonna loosen up a little bit over time and it's gonna put us right around where we want it to be with the RPM that we're gonna be running. So there's really not gonna be a need to pull it back off and adjust it. Um, it is gonna take probably about two hours of heat cycles and running for this to really kind of settle in and then it should be pulled back off and checked again. But any of the ones that I've done, I've only seen them lose about, you know, between two to three foot pounds of slip on it. So because this one's a little over 15 and we're only going to be shooting that 12, 13 mark anyways, and only around 81, 8200 RPM on this boat, that I don't see any need whatsoever for it to be uh, sent back and have the slip adjusted. But, you know, if you start to notice you're ha hammering the throttle and it seems to be kind of... Um, uh, laggy on the response, um, it's probably going to be supercharger slip that you're going to need to adjust. So uh, the customer that came to me and wanted me to do this for him, uh, I've already talked to him about all that stuff and he knows what to look out for. Um, one thing that I am going to go ahead and put on here before we wrap up today's video is uh, this is a Bautista Racing Team uh, Velocity Stack Adapter. This is going to be able to make us use a uh, a four inch, you know, if you're using Canaflex or a four inch coupler to make your own custom intake, uh, anything like that. And I've had the Riva ones. I've got the Riva one on my ski and the Riva one on my boat. And I am switching over to these. And these things are a lot more durable. They're just very smooth and the, the processing of it is just very good. The Riva one had a bunch of like air pocket holes and things like that. And I don't know, maybe I could have gotten a bad batch. It could have been old, you know, older style processing and stuff. I I'm not really sure, but I mean, this thing really blows those out of the water. So uh, we're gonna place that on there real quick. And it's a good idea too, to go ahead and put some, you know, anti-corrosion on this aluminum here because it is all bare. And we're gonna use that too, to lubricate this velocity stack. And I'm gonna leave in the description uh, the link to the um, uh, the velocity stack, the supercharger wheel, uh, the supercharger upgraded washers, and uh, so yeah, so let's get this thing on here. There you go. So you can see now we've got a nice smooth transition from four inch into here. I mean. This thing is really, really nice. And like I said, I've got two of them on the way now. So uh, shout out to uh, Bautista Racing Team for taking care of me on a couple of things. And I've got something coming up soon for my 300. Uh, from them, we're gonna be installing a water temp uh, sensor to determine what kind of you know late temp or uh, water temps I'm riding in. I'm gonna be putting that on my RXTH 300 because they don't have anything like that on those from the factory. So he's got a nice kit. 
uh, send it over to me. I'm going to be installing that one too. It's going to be uh, probably one of my future videos here pretty soon. And sorry if this was a lengthy one. Again, I like to make this stuff look real time and you know as detailed as possible and show you know not only the end result but the hurdles that you have to overcome through any kind of project that you might be taking on yourself so i hope that you all enjoy the video please give me a like and subscribe and we'll see you next time